Good day, ladies and gentlemen. Uh, today we're gonna start another series of topics uh, about uh, eightfold paths. So we know in uh, uh, four noble truths, uh, we have discussed what is uh, the what is suffering, the, the noble truth of suffering. So then we discuss um, the cause of that suffering after that we discussed um, how to get rid of this suffering so now we are going to discuss the process which would have said us the noble eightfold path so um, the first thing of this noble eightfold path is samadhiti in samadhiti in English, it's called uh, uh, right view. But do you really understand if somebody says uh, right view, what is it? What do you mean by right view? So we're going to discuss that in detail. <coughs> Excuse me. Uh, we will come to the Buddha's real definition of samadhiti. Buddha says, uh, Dukkha jnana, dukkha samudhe jnana, dukkha nirodhe jnana, dukkha nirodha gāminiya patipadaya jnana. I am ucchati bhikkhavi samma aditti. What does that mean? The dukkha jnana means you have to understand the, 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 how this dukkha or the suffering uh, evolves. What, what is suffering? First thing. It means that, 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 that there is a Four Noble Truth, right? Dukkha Jnana, the no, Noble Truth of Suffering, the Cause of Suffering, the, how to get rid of this suffering, and the Noble Path to uh, eradicate this suffering. So if you understand this properly, that is what is called Samadhiti, that is right weave. Now, when, you, when we go in detail, it means, you know, we have to understand how, what is suffering. The suffering is, we discussed in many clips before, we are attached to these external things which have been uh, made by getting together one or uh, many reasons. But our willingness is none of this, these reasons. So because of that reason, when one of one or many reasons got apart, then the result is going to be the changing or disappear. For example, your mom is surviving now because there are million or billion reasons which are functioning properly in her body. But your willingness for her to be surviving at this this particular moment is not one of those reasons. So those reasons are there because they have some sort of another helping functionalities. So when let's say for example, your mom to be alive now, your heart should be working properly. For the heart to be working properly, there are many other thousand reasons should be functioning properly. So this, your willingness for your mom to be surviving is none of these reasons. So now what you have attached to is your either your mom's picture to satisfy your eye, your mom's sound. So when your mom's talking, you're happy. So why? Because you're attached to mom's sound and mom's touch. That's why you give her a hug. And uh, when, you, when you smell your mom, you know, you know, she, she's she's very close, and she's ha you're happy. So, so anything to satisfy your six senses, which is coming from your mom, you're happy. So that's why you are attached to. For example, let's take mom's picture. So mom's picture, which you attach, let's say in by thirty-five, she got a very beautiful, sexy figure, but to have that beautiful figure there are many reasons got together 
but now mom's growing old now she's aging so she got all the wrinkles and stuff like that she can't hear now properly she can't see properly now she's old why because some of the reasons are not working properly some of the functionality is being uh, damaged or not working properly so because of that that uh, the aging issue you don't like it but you attach to that the 35 year figure without disregarding the fact that once those reasons gonna change if they get apart this big figure you attach is gonna be changing or disappear so once you understand that fact you understand that if you attach to that figure because it's gonna be changing definitely it's gonna give you a suffering so if you understand those two facts the first one is the nothing is going to the way you want and if you attach to that even though you have no control then what happens is when it is going to be changing it's going to give you suffering so the third one is then there's no point of going after them that is the basic and most important thing in buddhism if you understand those three facts you're not going to attach to anything because there's no point so that is the the reality of the world so dukkha jnana or the the noble truth of suffering and how that suffering evolves because you don't understand those three stops so if you understand that so you know how you are going to get rid of that situation it means you have to understand those three facts and then you have to stay stay away from it then means you have you don't have if you don't attach to those things there's no suffering so that was why if you see your mom you're going to be happy if daniel sees your mom probably she doesn't feel he doesn't feel anything because he's not attached to so but you are attached to and also if your mom's die then you are very sick you are sorry we are very sad but still daniel he doesn't feel anything because he, he doesn't know your mom he's not attached to your mom so he even though your mom's figure or the, the, the anything comes from you know to satisfy your six senses and the same thing um, doesn't make any sense to daniel because only these two instances the only difference is you are attached to those which daniel is not so mom's picture the same picture you you see and the daniel sees the same sound you hear or the daniel hears the same smell you smell and the and the and the daniel smells so it's exactly the same way but why the different feelings because you are attached to he is not so now you know that the how to get rid of this suffering is you have to understand the, the reality and then you have to stay away from these attachments but now when you understand all of these three things what is the the noble truth of suffering it means you attach to that and the things going when the the things are changing because of the fact that it is not going to the way you want so that uh, that is what is called uh, the suffering and uh, you know how it how the suffering takes place you know what you have to do to get away from suffering and the fourth thing, fourth uh, thing is the path the procedure process methodology theory of getting rid of these attachments and the first thing is samadhi means all of these things once you understand that fact those the everything i was talking about now you know there's no point of attaching to anything because if you attach to any of these external things because they're going to be changing your willingness is not one of those reasons which the result is uh, appearing so the result or the figure or the sound you attach to your smell you attach to, the touch you attach to the taste you attach to is going to be decaying or changing 
you know, or disappearing. So then you are sad. So that is what is called samaditi. So that the, the entire understanding, if you have it, that understanding is called samaditi. So uh, Buddha said once, uh, a Buddha asked uh, from Elder Sariputta Tero, uh, Sariputta, what do you mean by sota? So Sariputta Tero says, uh, samaditi, sama sankappa, sama vacha, sama kamanta, sama ajiva vayama sati, samadhi, all eightfold path is called sota. The Buddha said, yes, that is right. What is sota panna? It means, then Elder Sariputta Tero says, if somebody is getting to this, that noble eightfold path, it means he is sota panna. He has already then entered into this uh, noble eightfold path, it means he is a stream enterer. So what do you mean by that enter, getting into this uh, eightfold path? It means this understanding of this samaditi. So properly, in your mind, in your heart, from the bottom of your heart, if you have this 100% understanding, if you see anything, if all of these things we were talking about in this clip, if it comes to your mind, if you see your mom, if you see your daughters, if you see your sons, if you see your husband, wife, if you listen to the favorite, your favorite music album, if you, if you watch your, the, the, the favorite movie, and if you eat the favorite, uh, your most favorite food, if that comes to your mind, like this doesn't, this is, this, let's say pizza, you love pizza. When you eat, eat pizza, you, got a, you, you have that pleasure. Then suddenly you have to understand, you have to memorize, you have to analyze, you have to uh, penetrate through that this pizza didn't have any intrinsic value in it. This taste, it has the, the pizza taste. Why I'm feeling happy? Because I have I had relaxation before. Because of my weave, because of my mentality, I thought this pizza is really good. I wanted to have this. And then I was unbalanced with the, my mentality. So then I was suffering. I was vexing. I was worrying. When I can have this pizza? When, when, when? Oh my God, no, it's still four o'clock. The five, five o'clock, the shop's going to be open. So I have to wait another, another half an hour, one hour. So you were worrying, you were, you, you were vexing. So as soon as you get the pizza, that gap balances, that process was called pleasure. Then you had to understand all of these things and put that into the in the practice in your daily day-to-day -day activities. If you feel pleasure, if you feel like getting something, if you feel like having, you know, going after it, just talk to yourself. Hang on, hang on, hang on. This is not the right thing. I'm just going after an illusion. This is this shouldn't be doing. I shouldn't be doing this. So all of if all of these things come to your mind, then you have the samaditi, because that is samaditi. So I um, hope you understand that, and this is really important. So if you get that, you are in this stream enterer uh, position. So please try to understand and then put that into action in your daily routine. So bye for now. I'll come up with another clip very soon. Everyone's up, mate.